This is Join Us in France, episode 295. Bonjour, I'm Annie Sargent, and today I bring you a conversation with Elise about summer foods in France. We talk about eating habits in France during the warm months and the foods we all look forward to every summer in France. Show notes for this episode are on joinusinfrance.com forward slash 295295 <laughs> Bonjour, Elise. Bonjour, Annie. How are you, my friend? Oh, I am fine. It's a little hot, but I'm yeah, okay. It's getting warm. It's getting warm. It, yeah, <laughs> it's getting. This is getting to be real summertime. Real summertime. All right, let's talk about food. My oh God, yes. Subject. Now that we've just eaten, oh, let's God. talk about food. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So, French foods that we like to have in the summer. Do you think French people really have like food traditions for the summer? Well. I certainly think that here in the South, there are certain food traditions, although I guess at this point, things are pretty much everywhere. In other words, it's, it, I think it used to be, I mean, you can agree with this or not, but I'm not sure, but it's, I think in the past, it was much more regional. And now I think you can go just about anywhere in the country and find certain things that may not have been uh, national before, right. but there are still some regional differences, or maybe it's just that it, there are regional preferences to mm -hmm. things. And uh, yeah. yeah, French people tend to barbecue a lot, but they mostly do sausages. Yeah. The, I mean, the barbecuing I find is much more popular now than it was a few years ago. True. And they also have the... Um, I don't know. I can't remember what the word for it is. It's not really a barbecue, but it's kind of an electric grill that you can plug in. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. It's the, it's like an electric thing with water underneath. Exactly. Yeah, so, it traps the, the fat. Right. And yeah. you can put that, people put that outside and it's a nice compromise between a real, real barbecue and cooking inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And in the South, and again, uh, I guess I can only really talk about what we do around here because I'm not even sure. Uh, we really do a lot of that, right? Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it does get very, very hot. Yeah. And so we have these lovely uh, merguez yeah. in the South. I mean, anywhere in France. Right. That's a North African. Um, it's made with it's beef and, and lamb. lamb. No pork. No pork, obviously. Right. And spices. And spices. The spices are really, really good. I love them. They it, it taste really good. Then around here in Toulouse, we have chipolata. Yes. Which are a pork sausage. And there's... Like they're like skinny little ones. They're not the big fat yeah, sausage de Toulouse, which is like a rope. Right, right. Sausage de Toulouse is bigger. bigger yeah, right. Yeah, the chipolata kind of looks like uh, maybe breakfast. Yeah, like breakfast, sausage. like American breakfast sausages. But that, it, but it tastes better. <laughs> tastes better, much, much better. Absolutely, much, much better. Yes. I don't know why. Yeah, <laughs> much better. Tastes better. better. And so we do a fair amount of that. We do a, quite a few salads, some of which are kind of. I, I had never seen before in America, but it's been a long time since I lived in America. Um, one that I really like doing is watermelon with feta and uh, mint, and chopped mint. up mint and yeah. some olive oil. And you, you just mentioned that. It sounds delicious, to be honest. I've never yeah. tried that. I'm not a big, big fan of watermelon. I really love the orange melon, which would be the equivalent of the cantaloupe. Yeah. But that sounds like a great combination. Yeah, no, it's... it's kind of salty and sweet at yeah, the same time. Yeah, it's, it's really delicious. Another thing that I really like to eat in the summer is quiche, but with a twist. So I'm going to make it with either a lot of onion or a lot of uh, zucchini. Right. I, oh, I grow zucchini. You and grow zucchini. When you grow she zucchini... She grows zucchini and tomatoes, everybody. <laughs> When you grow zucchini, you always have either nothing or you too much. You have to eat them. <laughs> yes, yeah, you, you have, have to eat, eat a lot them. of zucchini. Yes, yeah. I have ginormous plants this year already. Right. And so, yeah, I, I find ways to put zucchini into everything. So I love quiche with zucchini yeah. or with Swiss chard, 
which is also a favorite of mine, or you could do it with uh, leeks, poireaux, la tarte au poireaux. So it's pretty much a basic quiche, yeah. but you, you add veggies to it's it. It's so funny because for me, the quiche with either uh, leeks or uh, Swiss chard, that's a staple for me of the winter. Ah, no. See, and, and I don't make too many quiche in the summer. What I, uh, going back to the, just the salad for a minute, one of my favorites, which is not necessarily just from here because it's, I guess, actually really originally Italian, is uh, good tomatoes with real good mozzarella and fresh basil leaves. Oh, yeah. And olive oil. And that I just love. Yeah, it's uh, kind it's, of caprese. Yeah, it, it's, I just love that. And my favorite mixed salad is a niçoise. Ah, uh, yes. See, and that... I, yeah, describe that because I don't know that everybody knows what that is. It's so funny because I think I've loved it so long that it's like if I go to certain places that have it, I look at everything on the menu and then I go, I'm going to get a niçoise. And I think to myself, how boring you are, you know, <laughs> but a niçoise, which I guess originally did start in Nice, yeah. is a salad that of course has lots of greens, but it has tuna. Yep. It has a little bit of, a little bit of anchovy, but some people actually don't like to have the anchovies. That's another, that's a whole question of taste. It has some potato, green beans, mm-hmm. And a little bit of tomato, but, and a little bit of hard boiled egg. And you put all of that on a bed of greens and I love it. It is one of my most favorite things. Right, right. And going, staying in Nice, you also have the pain bagna. The pain bagna, which is a bread, it's a sandwich. I don't know if it's originally uh, Italian or North African because Nice used to be Italian. And yet the, 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 but that round bread is like a North African bread. It's like a North African bread and it's got tuna and hard boiled egg and some tomato and lettuce and a special kind of sauce. That's kind of nice, uh, it's it's, creamy vinaigrette type sauce. Yeah. It's a vinaigrette. Yeah. Yeah, It's a vinaigrette. And that's a standard thing. And, and another thing that you get in Nice, uh, which you don't get here, it's really special in Nice is a kind of very strange flatbread made with chickpea, uh, chickpea flour. Yeah. Suka. Suka. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's delicious. That's, that's kind of nice. But, but, uh, yeah, I, I guess when the weather gets really hot, you know, when we're talking about weather getting really well into the nineties, it's, I tend to not want to make things too hot. Uh, even yeah. I'll cook a little bit in the morning if I have to, uh, and then try and figure out how not to cook for the rest of the day. Right. Because you don't have air conditioning at your house. Right. right. We, you know, we have a house that has tile floors and, uh, and the doors and windows stay closed. So it is, especially downstairs, relatively cool compared yeah. to outside. And I don't even have a, an oven that heats up the house that much. I actually have a very good oven that keeps the heat inside. But who wants to do that in the afternoon, yeah. really? Yeah. You yeah. Know? So Yeah, I avoid turning on my oven. We have air conditioning here, so I could, I guess. But right. I really avoid it. If there's anything I can make, either in on the barbecue, I have a big... You, you know, have a big one. Barbecue, big stainless one. Right. steel gas barbecue. Right. Uh, so I, I'll, I'll make it outside or I'll make it in the air fryer. Yeah. Because that's, I mean, there's just three of us most of the time. So right. it's, you know, it's not like right. we need a big, to turn on the big oven. Yeah. So if I need that, I'll do that. But yeah. I rarely turn on my oven in, yeah. the, in the summer. And I, I, if I do, up the house like I crazy. know, I, I try to do it to be done by 10 o'clock in the morning. You know, yeah. that's my thing. I, I love, I know it's Spanish, but I love gazpacho. Oh, yes. I yes. love what's got. And now, uh, I mean, it, I guess you can make it yourself. Uh, to be very honest, I'm too lazy now to do things like that. When you can go to the store and you have three or four different kinds. Of, yes, you, you can have buy a, it. You can get a green one. You can get one that's just the standard one that has mostly a base of tomatoes. You can get one that even has a little bit of uh, watermelon yep. in, in it. I mean, they are, and they're, some of them are uh, really good, high quality. Yeah. And they're delicious. This is one of the reasons why I'm plump and I've been plump all, all my life is because I like food. And one of the things that I really love in the middle of the afternoon is to have either a cup of soup in the winter. So like the instant soup. In the middle of the afternoon. In the middle yeah. of the afternoon. Or, uh, or a cup of gazpacho. Oh, really? Cold gazpacho. Oh, in that's the, interesting. I did it like... Yeah, I always have some in the fridge. In the middle of the afternoon. Yeah. That's when yeah. I have my, my cookies. You have your gazpacho. I, I, and, oh, I've, dis, I've discovered. So, you guys, next time you come to France, there's a new instant soup. It's, it's called Royco. Oh, they have ads for it on TV. It's 
delicious. It isn't really, it's not too salty because most of those instant soups are very salty. Well, there's probably too much salt in it anyway, but, but I, it, it doesn't you, taste but it's good. too salty to me. Huh. Oh, it is so good. They make them with mushroom, with oh. chicken noodle, uh, creamy chicken, um, asparagus, all sorts. And it's just a little packet. Yeah. And it's probably two third cup. Sounds like winter food to me. I know, but it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. Um, <laughs> I like cucumber soup also. Uh-huh. You, have you ever made a cucumber soup? You use a I base. I bought of, it, but I haven't made it. But it's really not. It, interestingly, I for some reason find that not hard to make at home. And so you need, of course, less of a very good cucumber. You take the seeds out. Uh, and you, use you should a, have told me last summer I, I had like 10 cucumber plants. I had cucumbers coming out of my oh, ears. Oh, you did. <laughs> I would love to see you with cucumbers coming out of your ears, actually. <laughs> no? And you use it with, uh, you can use it with a base of, of uh, yogurt. And you mix oh. it and dill and a little bit of garlic. And you mix it all together. Uh-huh. And, it's, and you f- put it in the fr- refrigerator I like it like that. It's you know nice and chilly. So yeah. what I do is a similar thing, but it's with zucchini. Yeah. Either green or yellow zucchini doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what shape it is. This year I'm uh, I'm growing mostly patty cake zucchini, the little the flat the, ones, the patty round ones yeah, with the scallop yeah, yeah, edges. Yeah. yeah, yeah, But it's the same. It tastes the same. Right. Uh, so uh, you cut, you chop that up with some onion, some water. You let it cook for until everything is nice and tender and then you can add you know the boursin cheese yeah it's a garlic i love it but my um, stomach doesn't like it oh you add a big oh tablespoon of that yes. and melt it in oh, it is so good or you can make it without the cheese with curry oh so i think i'd a, like that you make a, a curry f- you know, yeah. I, I just buy a, I mean, I'm not fancy. Most of the time I buy curry already a mixed. curry mix. Yeah. yeah. And so I just add some of that and mm, mm. it makes for a very good, and you can have it that hot, even hot or cold or right? cold yeah. or in between. I right. usually serve it in between. In between. <laughs> yes. She likes her things in between. <laughs> she likes her soup in the middle of the afternoon in <laughs> between. Right. And she likes the temperature in between. That's right. Goldilocks. Yes. <laughs> not and, too hot, and, not too cold. And yeah. one, another thing I really like. Uh, in the summer is to make salads with boiled eggs in it and also fruit. And fruit. The, the combination of eggs and fruit is what you like or is it with a bunch of other ingredients? I just like boiled eggs. Oh, you like boiled eggs yeah, a lot, huh? I do. I like them in anything. Yeah, that's not my biggest thing. But... Yeah, yeah. And so I will... And sometimes I even use canned fruit. So like canned oh. peaches. In the summer? In the summer. They're very nice in a salad. It's very good. Or fresh strawberries. We have lovely fresh strawberries right. in France. They're kind of expensive. So I, you know, it's... It's fine to buy a small quantity for for a salad, right? Instead of making a big bowl of strawberry, because that would cost you, you know, that costs euros. a lot of money. Yeah, yeah it, would it does cost, cost a lot, lot of money. money. But okay, that that's interesting. Now, I I would not put strawberries in a salad. I guess I would rather just keep my strawberries to Separate. themselves. <laughs> Like, I don't share my strawberries with even an egg. I know that's oh, it. That's strawberries with vinaigrette on it is very good. Really? Oh yeah, it's good. Uh, now me, it's stra- I'm a purist when it comes to strawberries, and, yeah. but but uh, I love putting melon in salad. Yes, different yes. kinds of and the melons here and now the the equivalent here of what is called a cantaloupe in the states. Uh, when you, you, they come from Spain because, and so, 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 well, other melons, as well. right? but the biggest, you know, the, when you get the Charente uh, melon here, it is so, so good. Yeah. I love it. It's, it's, yeah, it's, les melons oh, it's, it's very so good. delicious. Yeah. It's sweet. It's they're kind just of expensive, wonderful, but they're so good. They're you know? very good. Yeah. And then you can have that, like we did today with some very good sh- little ham, yes. uh, uh, raw prosciutto ham, ham, prosciutto type ham. Or uh, you can have it in a salad with some other things, you know. Another thing that people, French people love to do is to serve small melons cut in half with port wine with in it. a little port wine. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really classic, I would say the older generation. That's right. Really like that. Yeah, they do <laughs> like that. I, I find that using a little bit of melon with something like pieces of cold chicken diced up or something like that, uh, it's it's a... I've and, never done that. And a little bit of celery. If you mix that in together, it makes it kind of sweet, crunchy, and then uh, a little bit spicy. It's Those are really great combinations. Uh-huh. Oh, I'm getting hungry all over again. We just finished <laughs> eating. I can't believe this. Oh, and, and then, of course, what we had today, which is really kind of like having a quiche, but was not quite, and that is the uh, pisaladière. 
Oh, yeah, that was which, very good. Which is basically really easy, much easier actually than a quiche because you take um, a pizza dough. And, and in France, I have to say, one of the things I love is that you don't have to go to the freezer compartment and you don't have to make it yourself. You can go into the supermarket and you have several different kinds of pizza dough already ready to roll out. You have different kinds of other doughs. You have a flaky dough. You have a kind of just basic pie dough. Filo they're dough. very easy to find. And, and they're refrigerated. And they're not refrigerated frozen. and they're really good. Mm-hmm. And so all you do is that you have to, you cook up some onions with a little bit of herbs and uh, a little bit of salt and pepper. And you cook them up really well. And then you put a layer of onions and you add some filet of anchovy and some black olives and you put it in the oven. And it doesn't even have to go in for more than about 20 minutes at a high flame. And you've got, it's great. It's good. It's, it's really yeah, good. Yeah, because you can make your onions really tasty, flavor, yeah. flavorful. You know, you can reduce your onions. Exactly. Uh, low temperature, you don't want them charred at all. No. You want them just Really melted slowly. down. Yeah, yeah, know. melted down. It's, yeah. it's really delicious. It's a really good thing. I, I've, I've had this. My sister-in-law likes to make this. Uh, it's kind of a pizza, but she puts half figs in them. Oh. On the pizza. Oh. So, yeah. With ham? Uh, it's usually with artichokes and with some feta. And with fig, huh? Yeah, and fig. Yeah. Inter- interesting combination. And, and it looks like a pizza, you know, just a little a little thing. It's not quite fig country, uh, time yet, right? It's cut, figs oh, are no, in no. August. Well, okay, so the fig tree I planted a f- couple weeks ago is... Well, that'll be a while. It'll be a while. It's a baby, baby, <laughs> baby. <laughs> really? <laughs> Hey, I plan on being around a long time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this one will yield uh, figs twice a year. Twice a year. A first harvest in the spring and then... And the how fall. long before it will actually produce? Oh, probably you? four or five years. Four or five years. Yeah, it's small and... I mean, it might produce one or two, but actually the first few years is better if you remove the fruit because it... The, Producing fruit and ripening fruit is a huge effort for a plant. Oh, really? And so, especially if you have a young tree mm-hmm. that's got what looks like too many f- fruit, it's best to take them take off. Take them off. Just get, let it grow, let it get into its stride, and then you can let it And make is fruit. it black figs or green figs? They're going to be black. Black. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I, I, fig trees is a very special thing in the south of France. Yeah, we... I mean... I have one that grew wild, but just out of the foundation of my house, huh. right up against the house. And I fought with it and fought with it. So I would cut it down and it'd come back and, really? you know, and um, eventually I just dug up a big hole and got and deep got enough to get it out. To get it out. And I haven't seen it since, but it it's, might come back. It's funny. F- uh, fig trees are very much a Mediterranean tree. Yeah. And they have a very distinctive smell. Mm-hmm. I happen to love them. I just love what they look like. I love what they smell like. But yeah. some people really don't. Yeah. And so it's funny because around here when I walk, I see some that are very kind of a standard tree form with a trunk yeah. and branches. But there are some that just push out lots of trunks. Yeah. You know, and those uh, are normally the wild ones that just come because they want to. And did you know... Because I know this from having read this absolutely wonderful book recently, that a uh, fig tree is a member of the ficus family. Oh, like a ficus yep. plant? <laughs> yep. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. It is indeed. <laughs> well, I have my big book of, uh, of uh, plants here. Yep. So. <laughs> it's a member of the ficus family. Fun. fun. There you, that's probably why it has all those different branches coming out. Yeah. 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 But, and, and then, of course, the other summer fruits here that in France, I know a lot of people who are French will say, I hear this a lot. Oh, the fruit is not like it used to be. The fruit used to be bitter. The fruit doesn't have any oh, taste that's your anymore. Husband says that. Well, among other people, my husband. But then it, for him, <laughs> everything now is not as good as it used to yeah. be. And I have no idea what the used to be was anyway. But <laughs> but I think that the peaches and the nectarines mm-hmm. in France are so delicious. Yeah. Yeah. They I love summer fruit. It's I mean it's you know, melon, strawberries, peaches and uh, nectarines. Apricots are a little bit more complicated because they're not often very juicy and sweet unless you cook them up, you know. Okay, so apricots, they're like avocados. They're good today, disgusting tomorrow. Yeah. You have to eat them just at the right time. At the right time. Otherwise, mm -mm. And they're expensive. And they're pretty expensive. Yeah, 
five, six euros a yeah, kilo for, is for normal good ones. Yeah. for apricots. But, but it's yeah. true that all summer long, all summer long, you have melon and peaches and, yeah. uh, and nectarines and they are, oh, so good. Just and if I was patient enough, I could make like little lemon ball yeah. with melons and, um, you don't see that here too much. Not so much, but no. yeah. Um, the thing is in France, if you cook three times a day, well, not three times a day, but if you cook twice a day, like I do most days. Yeah. You don't want to spend half an no, hour no, 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 balling no, no. melons. No, but most people just slice up melon here. You know, I mean, yeah. that, that the other thing is, and this is makes me think of a difference in habits between Americans and French. I'm not sure about other countries, is that people sometimes eat fruit, even that kind of fruit, with a knife and fork here, and you very rarely yeah. see that in the states. People will not. You know, even a peach, I remember the very first time I came to Europe a long, long, long time ago. Actually, I think there was electricity, but I'm not sure if there was anything <laughs> else at that time. And went to Italy uh, and on my little student budget, you know, one of these little restaurants where the dessert was a peach. And I remember because they served the peach on a little dish with a knife and fork. Yeah. And, and I was looking at the knife and fork, trying to figure out what I was supposed to do with it. Because I don't know. We, I never thought of eating a peach okay, with a knife so and fork. Okay, you know? so now I, I, I had some dental work on my, some crowns on my front teeth. And I am very wary of biting uh, into, uh, I don't want to break those crowns. Right. Oh, well, I, I understand. Yeah. yeah. And so if I have, um, if it's something I need to bite into, I might use a knife. You might do the knife. Yes. Or what I do instead is we also have wonderful flat, uh, um, oh, peaches, peaches, that's and new flat, um, the brunion plat. Yeah. The right. Nectarines. Nectarines. Yeah. And they're flat. And so they're easy to eat. They're easy to eat. They're actually, <laughs> they I have to be honest. I mean, you know, when it comes, I, I eat apples that way. I do cut apples up into pieces, you well, know, there you go. Yeah. but, and, but, Peaches, I never thought of doing that before, but you know, I, uh -huh. I was embarrassed to, to not do what you're supposed to do in this restaurant. And I remember trying to keep the peach from sliding across the plate as I was <laughs> trying to attack it to eat it. So one thing you can do in France on your barbecue that I've never seen anywhere else for obvious reasons is that you can grill little uh, rocamadour cheese. Oh, really? But you have to be really quick. You have to really ah. watch them. You just want them to... So you want to spray some oil on them yeah. or, or brush some oil on them. And then you put them on the hot grill, like maybe a minute on each side. So the outside melts a little bit, but not the inside. Right. And you get the grill kind of uh, marking. Mark, huh? Yeah. But, and oh, it's very Now, good. everybody know bread. that the Rocamador is a little goat cheese that looks like a hockey puck. Exactly. It looks like a hockey puck and it has a kind of a, not a crust, but a, a skin on it. A very thin skin on it. Right. Yeah. And, very thin, so, and, and they're very good. Yeah. It's delicious. So delicious. that's something I've done. And, and, and I've seen people do grilled fruit on the, uh, that way too. Yes. Beaches particularly. Yeah. yeah beaches yeah. or watermelon. Right. No, not watermelon, but uh, melons. Melon. Really. Yeah. Chante. Yeah. No chante. Yeah. Yeah. Or uh, obviously zucchini. You can, you know, slice up your zucchini and. Uh, and ratatouille. Okay. So ah, ratatouille. here we go. Yes. So ratatouille. This is like the problem for me is that I love fruits and vegetables. And if I eat too much of ratatouille, then I suffer a little bit from a lot of this <laughs> stuff. It's, it's a little bit too much. But of course, the base of it is tomato, zucchini green pepper, a little bit of onion, and eggplant. Yep. And if you follow the original traditional way of doing it, which I certainly do not, you would cook each one separately and then put them all together at the last minute with a lot of chopped up tomato and all of this to make it very savory. And uh, never mind. I mean, no, yeah. uh, never there's, mind. There's no, no reason to do this. No way anymore. Yeah. You know? So what you just have to know is how long each vegetable takes to cook and using the same big pan or pot that basically what I do is I start off, of course, by doing the green pepper and onion, because that really needs to be cooked down a bit. And then you add first the eggplant and then you add, you know, whatever, if the zucchini and then tomato little by little. So you know how long each one takes to cook to be really at a certain stage. Yeah. You know? I, I know I've mentioned this not on the podcast, but in the Facebook group for the podcast, that what I do is I have this big pot with a good lid. I put a good half a cup of oil at the bottom. It's, you need plenty of oil. Then three or four onions, uh, three or two, two um, uh, eggplant, two zucchini, sometimes three depending on the size, 
uh, cut them all up, put them in there. I just, as soon as I'm done, done chopping, so I start chopping the onions yeah. first, and then I add the green pepper. And then as soon as they're chopped, you know, you put, put it them in. in. And then I put the lid on. I make sure there's enough liquid in there. So I'll do some tomato uh, juice. juice. Right. Um, or I use some, um, I mean, I always use like some canned fresh tomato tomatoes. Type thing. Right. But you know, the, the, right. yeah, the canned tomato, right. cause that's more With water liquidy, than anything. Yeah. Cause if I use some of my garden tomatoes, which I always do, they are firm. Like right. they have more bite to it and not so much water content. So you have to ha- make sure you have enough liquid. I cover the thing, put it on low. Like I have, um, um, uh, what do you call these, uh, these, um, uh, uh, timer. No, my my stove. What is it? It's, uh, oh, it's a. Um, um, it's called a induction. Induction. <clears throat> so I have an induction um, um, kind of cooker, right. whatever you call that, and so I can put it on low. Yeah. I put it. it you just from, layer them and you let it go. Yep. Yep. I cover Amazing. it. I leave. I mean, I. I will, I'm in the house, so I come right. and make sure that it's not right. attaching. But if you put it on like three out of nine, uh, you're really pretty. And you don't stir it up or anything. See, I do little by little A each little one, bit. Which is already time consuming. A you know? little bit. But I, it, you really, it's no fuss. Right. It's like so easy to make. But it will take, it, I'll let it cool, cook for two hours. Because I like vegetables well mm. cooked, especially that. Because part of the yeah. thing about ratatouille is that the the, the, the flavors blend together. Yes, it really yes. has to be. And I didn't mention it, but I obviously add some garlic, right? Um, you know, I, some herbe de Provence if yeah. you like that. But that I do at the end. At the end. At the end, when I you know I will add some salt. Just to taste. I just... I, I cook up the garlic at the beginning with the onions, but, but you're right. And I actually like it better the next day. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. It, you, it's like a stew. You let everything sit together. Yeah. And ratatouille is good because you can have it hot or cold. Exactly. It really is something Or you can put wonderful. it on a pizza. Yep. Or, you, I mean, it's... I've, I've blended it down into a cold soup. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> you know why not? It's Absolutely. really easy. And the other thing that we do in France that I had never seen in the U.S. is called tion de légumes. Okay, which is essentially the same vegetables as ratatouille. As a matter of fact, gardeners around here they talk about planting your on plant la ratatouille. Ah, which means that selection of, uh, of vegetables, <laughs> right. right? Because you plant them all pretty much at the same time, right? So, like uh, gardening shows, they'll tell you it's. Uh, Maintenant, on peut planter la ratatouille. <laughs> no. It's hot enough. It's hot enough. Yeah. And don't go looking for the uh, uh, vegetable in the store that's called a ratatouille. No, there's right? no, there's no, no such thing. Yeah. Right. But it's just the standard, you know, onion, zucchini, green pepper, Courgette. eggplant, uh, and what else? Courgette. Zucchini. Oh, Courgette. zucchini. Yeah. 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 So, you, so you take and all tomato. of the... Yeah. And tomato. That's right. You take all of these and you slice them and you... Um, Place them in a dish sideways. 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 And yeah. so and so you like you're making a caprese or something. Like ah. you, you, you so it's gonna be uh, a yellow zucchini and then a red tomato right. slice and then a you know a, a purple uh, eggplant and then you know you uh, a slice of onion, uh, all of that. And then you drizzle some oil on top. Not as not near as enough, in my opinion. But that's why I prefer ratatouille because it's like the cooked down ratatouille yeah. because you, there's enough olive oil. Yeah. That is, the, the tion de légumes is drier. It's drier. It's okay. It's drier. There's uh, no sauce. Not, not really. really. No. Not really. So, and, and you drizzle the, the olive oil, you add some salt, you add some whatever you like, you know, uh, garlic, um, um, herbe de Provence, whatever you enjoy, and you put it in the oven. Mm-hmm. And when it comes out, it tastes kind of like a ratatouille because it's the same vegetables, but it's a lot more presentable. It's okay. pretty. Because ratatouille, really, when you serve it, it's like this, <laughs> you know, it's like this. Yeah. It, it doesn't is. look great. It doesn't look great. Right? No. So um, in a lot of restaurants, what they do is they serve ratatouille in, in a little bowl, a or little something. bowl right. dish, a cute dish on the yeah. side. Because if you just put it on the plate, it it'll runs. just run. Yeah. yeah. It'll just run. Right. And it's, it's, it's hard to make it look good. Right. Yeah. yeah. Whereas the tion, the legume, same basic, basic vegetables, uh, you cook it for an hour and a half on a oh, low do. oven. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You could make it on the barbecue, but you'd have to do it really low and a long time. Okay. An hour, an hour and a half at, you know, 
as long as you can get your gas grill, pretty much. And yeah, I that's crunchier. The vegetables are crunchier mm. and all of that. Yeah, not not my thing so much, but but it's it's good. Lots of people like it, and it looks good. It looks really good. Another thing that looks really good is the uh, tomatoes. Yes. Uh, so cooked tomatoes with some something in inside. Oh, cooked ones. Yeah. 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 So um, they, they, they you like stuffed tomatoes. Yeah, tomate farci. So that if, to me again is a winter thing. It's so funny. Oh, I like well awesome. because I grow tomatoes. I have come, like I have twenty tomato plants. I can, I could just you know <laughs> eat raw tomatoes all the time. I mean there are so many. Mm, I, no, I love tomatoes. I just when love my them. plants. I mean, like I had my first big uh, juicy tomato yesterday. Yesterday, I harvested. I've already? had cherry tomatoes wow. for okay. a few days already, yeah. but the nice big ones, yeah. they're just coming. But when they start coming, they they're never stay. Like it's like explosion of tomatoes, and there's only so many things you can do, you do with them. Do you can them at all? So I don't can them, but I freeze them. Freeze so them. I make, um, I uh, boil them, remove the skin, put them in. Um, Vacuum pack. Right. Um, and then I put that in the freezer. In the freezer. Yeah. Or I make salsa. Uh-huh. And I freeze it the same way as in a vacuum pack right. bag and put it in the, in the freezer. That, but, that, that's good. Yeah. That's but good. that's kind of a cooked... It's, right. I, I do the same thing with the zucchini. When I have too much zucchini, I cut it up. You wash it. You cut it up. The, the vacuum pack stuff... That's because you have a good chest freezer. So yes, I, I don't have freezer. one that big. So yeah, I can't yeah. really keep it. I was just thinking though that it's, I guess, more of a spring vegetable, but it's something that I really like. And that is fresh peas. Ah, yes. That's earlier. Yes. And it is really something, France is still a country where things fresh are by season. Yes. And like strawberries are really a spring thing. And then they come back again in September. Yeah. Well, in July and August, you will have a hard time finding strawberries. Yeah. You know? It's very strange. Most Americans don't realize that that's really still by seasons here. Well, you'll find them, but they, they'll be tasteless. They won't be very they'll, good. They'll right. come from a northern country. Right, exactly. Mm. But fresh peas are so good. Yeah. yeah. So this year I planted sugar snap peas. Oh. And I didn't realize that once you've harvested them, they're done. Oh, the plant d dies. Oh, the plant dies. Yes. So what I should have done is just planted another row. Oh. So you plant one row one week, and then two weeks later you plant another row. You oh, know, they don't so you do more after that. No, I th at least the, the the variety I planted, huh. they didn't. They just, I mean, they made plenty of beautiful sugar snap pea, but right. they didn't come back. They didn't come back. No. Yeah. So I was, mm -hmm. I was a little surprised, but anyway, going back to my stuffed tomatoes, yes, you can obviously stuff them with meat if you want, right. but, or rice or, or rice, or it's very good with chestnuts. Chestnuts. Yeah. If you have left, cause chestnuts is a, chestnuts. is a winter, yeah. it's a winter thing. But if you mix chestnut with a little bit of meat oh. and you stuff it in tomato, it's, it's very good. Oh, that's an odd, <laughs> to me, that's a, an interesting, but odd, uh, mix. Uh, yeah, uh, it's interesting. Though, no, it's huh? good. I was just thinking too about n n not so much tomatoes afterwards, but something. Now we are in Toulouse, which is not close to the sea, but we're never that far away, and so we do get lots of things fresh. But especially in the summertime, if people go to the seashore, whichever direction, whether you go Mediterranean or Atlantic, one of the things that people eat a lot of, I love, is mussels. Yes. Love mussels. I love mussels. Yes. And oysters, but I don't eat them in the, in yeah. the summer. And I'm not a big oyster fan, unfortunately. Oysters are a winter thing. Yeah. It's for Christmas, New Year, right. and around that. Right. But mussels are very much uh, it's a, a summer, summer, summer thing, yeah. you know. And of course, the standard thing is a huge pot of mussels. Now you can get mussels marinara, which is just with a white wine sauce. Or you get now, they're very inventive about different kinds of sauces. There's a roquefort <laughs> sauce and yeah. curry sauce, whatever. And then fries on the side. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, it's delicious. And yeah. a little bit of nice crisp wine, you know. And, yes. Uh, and in Normandy, obviously, it's with... Um, uh, cream. Cream, yes. Yes, yeah, yes. Cream to that. And in Brittany... Uh, it's pretty much a combination. It's either cream or wine. But I've actually recently had uh, with a curry sauce. That was very good too. I've never had that. Hmm. Yeah. It's actually right. a little bit of cream. I mean, I can't really handle too much cream, but it was a little bit of curry and a little bit of cream. And it was very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another thing that people, French people like to do in the summer is the terrine de... Like so, a pâté? So it's like a pâté, but it's terrine de poisson or terrine de, right. de, 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 de légumes. The légumes. So you will do a layer that's mostly carrots. So that's your orange layer. Then you will do a layer of 
you know, the yellow zucchini, for instance. So it's kind of white, yeah, yellow, uh, and a, and a layer of something else. You do two or three layers, and you just set them in this dish, cooked. Uh, Oh yes, you have to cook everything separately. I cook everything separately. Then you have to, it's like making a jello Okay. A jello something well, or right, other. Right, with the with the levels. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I yeah, see it. I you see. You have it. different right. levels. Right. And you have to spray some oil on on the edges so it come out, you mm-hmm. know. But you have to be patient, but it looks great. If you have company, it's something And then you can slice it and you have the the nice exactly. layers. So everybody and everything gets like a slice. Another thing that French people use all the time is crouton. So on your salads. Right. Just add little croutons. So occasionally I make my own with when I have leftover baguette or right. whatever. But I always add too much oil to my homemade crouton uh, because it's hard to like to make I them know. look right, right exactly <clears throat> in the pan. Yeah, so you, I tend to. Just, it's a lot of work, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's a lot of work, and you can buy them. It's so cheap. You just buy them, yeah. right? Yeah. Just don't buy so much bread, and then you don't have to figure out what to do with it when it's. <laughs> <laughs> when it's dry. Another thing that French people use a lot is pine nuts in salads. Ah, now but that, I, I think I, Americans too, I guess. I don't know. I've I've seen them in some Italian dishes, but I guess I have not seen too many other dishes with pine nuts. So in salads, you just use some pine They're nuts. They're expensive. They're quite expensive. Yeah, a small, like a small bag of pine nuts will run you five euros. Or yeah, something. it's it's. I mean, they are very good, but they're but sometimes very you find expensive. them at Lidl for like a buck. Oh so. yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that I've not, no no pine nuts. <laughs> I wouldn't imagine using a lot. But um, another go. I'm I'm off on my fish trip here. Over between muscles. I was thinking of the other thing. I know it smells a lot, but I love, and that is if you have an outdoor grill to make fresh sardines. Oh, oh. you don't mm, like them. No, I love them. My brother loves oh, them. Oh, I love them. Oh. I love them. Well, you see, I spent some time living on Corsica and, uh, one of the uh, dishes that they would make there, and it really was delicious. It was on an outdoor grill. They would take uh, fresh sardines and they would open them up and they would put in uh, a brooch, which is kind of like a ricotta cheese which is mixed with some garlic and some parsley. Mm-hmm. And it's like makes a little stuffing. And so you open up the sardine, you put that a little bit in, you grill it, and it is so wonderfully good. And it stinks. Oh, but sardines are so good. But you mm. have to like this. You have to like this. I love them. When I was so, in Portugal, I had sardines every single night. So I love sardines, but in a can. Oh, well. Canned sardines? Poor babies. Eat. What? Uh, it's the same. I know. It's but the they're so much nicer grilled fresh and, and outside. Then, yeah, yeah, must be outside. 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 Yeah. 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 Uh, another thing that we eat quite a bit of in the summer is obviously uh, tabouleh. Yeah. Which is a North African. Which is really, I guess, you know, North African, right? Yeah, it's North African. And then people from North Africa make it way better than French yes. people. Um, so it's a base of. Uh, it's it's semoule. It's, like it's like couscous. couscous. Yeah, right. couscous, semoule. And then you will add some vegetables. So And they add mint. Yeah, mint or coriander or some of both. Some and, chopped tomato. Right. And you can do what else? shrimp Salt. in it. You can do cooked chicken in it. Yeah. You can do, um, yeah, it has to be nice and salty. Some some little, whatever greens you have, like parsley, you can make it. Yeah. Like you wouldn't do all three. Like if you have cilantro, you do that. If you have parsley, right. you do that. Or you, mint. Or mint, but you don't. Mint is strong. You don't use yeah, a little bit. Yes, one of the three, you right. know. And um and you can, whatever, if you have corn, put corn in there, you know, whatever. I, I have to confess that I don't usually make it. I buy it. That's right. You can buy very good. You can buy it. Yeah. Tabouleh. You boxes. add, I mean, sometimes what I do is I buy it and then I just add a little bit of uh, herbs to it and a little bit more tomato and stuff like that. I've you know. made it, but not very often. And I'd rather buy it. It's, it's, it's so much easier to yeah. buy. You know? Yeah. It just yeah. really is. Yeah. yeah. Are there any cheeses that are specifically summer cheeses? Well... I don't think so, are there? The fromage frais. The... But uh, uh, my most cheese production is after the summer, I guess, because the cows produce a lot of milk in the summer. So my guess is that most cheese is actually made after that. That is an excellent question. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know either. Because, hmm. I mean, cows need, these days, they produce year-round. Right, but they seem, you know, the grass is greener in the summer. They chew a lot more in the summer. I would think that they yeah. produce a lot more rich milk in the summer. I don't know. But that's, a, yeah, I never thought about that, mm-hmm. you know. A, a thing that's a classic is a garbanzo bean oh, yeah. salad with yeah. fresh tomatoes. With fresh tomatoes. Some onions, um, a that's little bit of olive oil. That's what she wants to kill me. When Annie wants to kill me, she puts fresh tomato onions in my salad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, you're absolutely right. You it's really like good, especially if you put in a little bit of the Moroccan couscous spice. 
which mm-hmm. is a nice blend. It gives it a little bit of a kick. Mm-hmm. It, it's really nice to have. That. Um, are, are, we're, we're not ready to talk about wine yet, are we? Well, we need to hurry up because we've been at this 40 minutes okay, already. Okay, let, let's talk a little bit about wine. Yes. Because I think we need to. Rosé. Rosé. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely rosé. Definitely rosé. Yes. Yeah. I don't know why I wouldn't think to drink rosé in the middle of the winter. Nobody does. Right. But now, yes. It, it's And what usually drink? with ice cubes. Well, but I'm an ice cube person. She's an ice cube person. I will that, put that's ice the cubes American in her. Yeah. You know, I love ice cubes and I love lots of them. It, it is a fact, though, that um, now it is the dominant wine in the summertime everywhere yeah. in France. Yeah, and there are very good rosés. Yes. So my favorite tend to be the Corsican rosés. Uh huh. They're a little strong. They're, they're good. They're, yeah, they're yeah. Really um, I like. Um, so around the, the Camargue, they have this Listel kind of. Yeah. Uh, it's very. That one is very pale. That's very pale, right? But I I enjoy it. Right. Um, Pays de Loire. They have nice rosés. I'm gonna. I'm planning on buying a case tomorrow. You're gonna buy a case? Yes. From it's where? On, it's on sale at Lidl. Oh, her favorite store. Yes. <laughs> so. The, the rosés from the Loire are a little bit darker in color, and they're a little bit fruitier. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're fruitier. Yeah. I like yeah. the Provence rosés that are very pale and very, very dry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, of course, they mix rosé with all sorts of things. So they have rosé pamplemousse. Yes. Uh, they use rosé to make spritz. Yes, you which know, is delicious. Frappero is very good. Yeah. It's very good. It's yeah. very good. Yeah. But spritz is just a it's just a mix. It's, it's just, a mixer with some yeah. wine in it. But, and but, ice cubes. I mean, rosé is served very cold. Yes. And it's it's good wine. It's not unlike I think Americans have this idea that it's kind of like diluted red wine. It's not. No, no. It's totally no. different. It's made in a different way. Yeah. And it's really delicious. Yes. And desserts in the summer, I don't know, ice creams. like Ice creams and fruits. I yeah, mean, it, yeah. It, it, it's, people don't do cakes that much in the summertime. No cakes, no and crepes. a little bit of t- fruit tarts sometimes, you know. Yeah, so yeah. maybe like you throw together some... So if you have a lot of fruit trees in your backyard Like or I like making an apricot tart or yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. If you, you have know. some... If you have some fruit that you grow, you have too much, you make some some tart with it. L- last year, I actually made a, a peach tart for uh, some French friends, and they had said to me, nobody makes things with peaches like that. And they, <laughs> they liked it afterwards. It was very strange. They had never had one before. So what we don't do in France in the summer is um, platters of chopped up celery and chopped up... Right. Uh, the crudité. Uh, crudité. Right. I mean, they... You can buy them sometimes so it's gonna have like some broccoli florets and some uh whatever yeah i mean to dip in ranch or whatever we don't do that because we don't do dips we don't do a lot of dips i mean like i'm going to a big party uh in a couple of weekends 50th and it's a birthday party and so they've asked me to do a seven layer dip Mm because you know to to, to them, I'm the American. Right. And so I'm going to bring a seven layer dip and some, probably some either corn dip or crab dip or something like that. So American things. Right. But these are not things that you would bring to a party in no. the summer in France. You, no. You would, yeah. T- people tend to do the aperitif with either uh, rosé or a crisp white wine. Yeah. And then have just your basic little, just little kind of little crackery things, little crackers or nuts. Not too much, not heavy because it, you don't eat heavy in the summertime. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, but, but, uh, people, um, we eat a lot of olives, obviously. A lot of olives. Yeah. A lot of, of all olives. sorts, all colors, all sizes. And I can't go a day without eating olives. Is that true? I love olives. I love olives too, but I think I can go a day or two without eating them. I, I don't. Mm-mm. The only ones that I find overrated are the tiny Nichois, which They're are teeny salty. weeny. They're yeah. teeny weeny. The whole center is, a, is, the, is the pit. Yeah. There's hardly anything to eat on them. I don't like them. them either. I'm not sure why they're supposed to be so wonderful. But, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, olives, yeah, are, olives are good. But uh, yeah. I'm very much into the gaspachera olives from Spain. Oh. That's a kind of the kind of brine that they're in. Oh. Like, is it spicier? Not very. Hmm. No. But I also like spicy olives from North Africa. Oh, those are so good. So the, like, you know, the spicy stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. That has... Yeah, some kick to it. It has some real kick to it. Yeah. 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 So if you're invited by French people and you want to impress them, I guess you could bring a tian de légumes 
Or, or you could bring... Um, if you find a good bottle of rosé, that's fine. Yes, that'd be good. We, we eat plenty of chips. Yes, that's true. Potato chips. Yes. <laughs> the, the, the disease has spread yes. to France. Yes. <laughs> Lots of potato chips. Lots of potato France. chips, yes. Not so... Not, not many crackers. Some. Those little tiny little aperitif ones, you know. Yeah. Most of the people I know eat a lot of those little ones. What they don't eat here are pretzels, mostly. Yeah, not you so many pretzels, pretzels no. no. But chips I mean, there's several. some aperitif at pretzel, yeah. pretzel aperitif, but not not so common, yeah. But uh, and even melon as an aperitif sometimes is very good. Summer breads, mm, maybe focaccia. Yeah. So you make a you know like a nice flat bread and put some herbs and olive put oil. Put some more herbs, or you could put some cheese or some dried sun dried tomatoes or something, and make it look cool. Like you poke your finger through. And then if you get invited to somebody that has all these little things. Then you've had your dinner by the time you're done. It's a, it's, oh, yeah. yeah so it's, aperitif is, dinatoire is a big it, thing you know, in summer. So a ev- little bit of everything. Every, everybody brings two or three things for apéro and right. then nobody's making dinner. Because no. it's just nope. apéro, is it? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Elise, we've been talking too long. <laughs> oh, God, we've been talking too long. We're talking about food. It's the most important occupation we, in we, all of France. We didn't even have a list to go by. No, we didn't. <laughs> we just, and notice we just don't have – we can go on and on and on. <laughs> Bon appétit, everybody. Bon appétit, everybody. <laughs> Au revoir. Au revoir. Thank you, patrons, for giving me a precious gift, the time to produce this podcast. Your few dollars a month make it all possible, and in these times of great anxiety and uncertainty, it is so appreciated. Patrons get several exclusive rewards for doing so. You can see them at patreon.com forward slash join us, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Join us, no spaces or dashes. My thanks to all of you for supporting the show. Some of you for many years now, you are fantastic. And a shout out this week to new patrons, Karen Sue Burrell, Vicky Hirsch, and Jen. Jeff Protzman, thank you so much. Jeff wrote, Annie, I have listened to so many of your podcasts over the last few months, and I have really enjoyed the the diverse content and how much you and Elise have fun chatting about the various subject matter. Thank you for bringing a little of France into my home each week. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much for your support, Jeff. This week, I uploaded the first video for patrons that explain driving in France. I started out super simple, but pretty soon I'll take you to the complicated roundabouts with lights in the middles and funny lines that uh, nobody knows what they are. And sometimes, you know, like crosses, red crosses that people go, what is that? Um, One guy who is not a patron commented, ah, it's easy, just drive slow. Oh, yeah? No amount of slow can make up for, I have no idea what's happening here. (laughs) Elise is away in Brittany, so I don't know if she has new patrons. But if you'd like to support her too, go to patreon.com forward slash Eliseart. So that's uh, Patreon, same way, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Eliseart is E-L-Y-S-A-R-T. And as you heard today, she brings a lot to this podcast. And if you're starting to think about taking a trip to France, I can help you make a custom itinerary just for you. Day-by-day suggestions of what to see, what to do, where to eat, where to stop, how to get there, and how to navigate around this pandemic in France. We'll talk it over on the phone and I'll send you your own trip plan with all the details. It'll cost you 50 bucks and it will save you, I kid you not, weeks of research. Plus, you get the input of a local. Email Annie at joinusinfrance.com to set that up and write itinerary review in the subject line. And you can also support the show without spending a penny you wouldn't have otherwise. Before you go shopping on Amazon, go to the bottom of any page on joinusinfrance.com and click on the Amazon ad. And thank you so much. As you may know, France is almost back to pre-pandemic life. The only thing we can't do is go to events with more than 5,000 people, such as big indoor sports, uh, big concerts, uh, etc. Places like Disneyland Paris and Le Puy du Fou, 
are also open, but masks are required. Starting last Monday, everybody in France now wears a face mask while indoors. It was already mandatory in taxis and public transportation, but now it's mandatory anywhere the public can go. Let me give you some example of what I mean. At a law firm, for example, or a software company, that would be the lobby and the conference rooms that are open to the public. All the back offices where the public doesn't go are not included in this mandate. Masks are mandatory at stores, no matter what they sell. At libraries, banks, government offices, doctor's offices, planes, trains, buses, anywhere indoors where the public can go. Your private car, your private home, you do what you want, of course. But if you receive the public, like Uber or taxi, the mask is mandated. Hotels receive the public, the mandate applies. The public comes to your offices for any reason, mask is mandated. It's a drag, but it beats risking contracting this virus or passing it on unknowingly. We don't have 100% compliance, but it's pretty close. Um, we have the folks who wear the mask wrong, I think on purpose. But what are you going to do? I, you know, I looked for stores where most patrons seem to get it, where they provide hand gel and where the staff complies. I don't think 100% from the general population is attainable. And, you know, I'm just going to accept that. So long as most people are compliant, I think we'll be okay. Also, a few tourist cities have a mask mandate outside, outside this time, anywhere people are too close. I know about La Rochelle for, so, for sure. That's, that's the area right around the old port. There may be others it's just starting and it's probably just for the high tourist months, you know. You know the popular towns, how it's a madhouse right around the popular spots at times. These areas are going to have mask mandates, even outdoors. So that means that you have to have a clean mask on you uh, or some city cop might, you know, turn you away. I don't know. I, I haven't heard any reports. I, I don't know how much it's policed. I think it's probably pretty casual, but that's the recommendation anyway. The government is also sending free masks to families that are on public assistance to avoid uh, an undue burden on them, because even though masks are cheap, it'll add up. The virus is still going around in France. Most days, around 500 new cases are diagnosed which probably means there are more, but we just don't know about all of them. That's still a lot. Not as much as it was a few months back, but still a lot. And the numbers could spike at any time. French people are going on vacation, and so they might bring it back even to my area with very little virus right now. So I am not letting my guard down. I'm noticing that this summer there are more people around the Toulouse area than normal. Uh, so not everybody is going on vacation, but a lot of people are. The number of deaths is still going down, often 10 or fewer per day. And hospitals are not overwhelmed anywhere in France, but any death to a virus we could avoid is too many. I went to the massive uh, family birthday bash last weekend, about 70 people. I stayed away from other people as much as you can at a party. <laughs> I stayed sober because I had brought my own sodas in a cooler. I played the slideshow retrospective of my brother-in-law's life that I prepared for the occasion. And I left much earlier than I would have otherwise. I know you'll be shocked, but I'm not a party animal or a risk taker. <laughs> so when everyone started to dance and I saw them throwing my large brother-in-law into the air, I knew most of them were good and drunk and it was time to leave. French people party very hard. <laughs> Plus, my sister provided lots and lots of free booze and my brother was DJing. He's good at it. He has been doing it as a hobby for decades so it was a great party. <laughs> After that party, everyone shared photos on WhatsApp, and I know we missed out, but staying healthy will continue to be my top priority, probably even after the pandemic is over. 
Luckily, nobody got sick as a result of this party. Occitanie, my part of France, is uh, where the virus circulation is the lowest in France right now. So, yeah, we lucked out. Uh, but I don't care who else has a birthday. I'm not going to another big party like that until there are better ways to deal with this virus. And, you know, I'll have friends and family over for a meal outside on the terrace, but no big groups. I really, really wish for a cheap and fast test. We don't need a perfect test. We need a quick and cheap test. I know scientists are working on it. So please keep working on it. We really need this. Next week on the podcast, I'll bring you a great trip report about walking the Chemin de Compostelle in France. My guest, Lisa, was wonderful to talk to. She has great tips for those of you who are interested on walking the Chemin de Camino. But even if you don't, uh, she really shared an inspiring story and you'll definitely want to listen to that. Send questions or feedback to Annie at joinusinfrance.com. Have a great week. Please stay safe and I'll talk to you next week. Au revoir. The Join Us in France Travel Podcast is written and produced by Annie Sargent and copyright 2020 by Addicted to France. It is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Mm -hmm.